this is the perfect ranking for all nine Spider-Man movies. And it's a ranking video, which means we're getting controversial. But it's my list. I don't miss. I'm only doing the Spider-Man movie, so I'm not going to be including Morbius or Venom. I mean, let's be real. Morbius would probably be number one. It's Morbin time. And I just want to start off by saying that I love every single one of these movies. Spider-Man is my favorite fictional character of all time. I love every actor's unique portrayal of the character. And at the end of the day, I feel like I win. In ninth place, I got Spider-Man Far From Home. I already know I hear you. It's underrated. Uh, overhated. And I agree with all those sentiments. I think it's a really fun, enjoyable movie. But in my opinion, this is the least quote unquote Spider-Man movie. They took him out of New York. And I feel like they were really trying to push him to be the next Iron Man in the MCU. And I get it. That's kind of like his character arc was like, I'm not Iron Man. I'm my own hero. But I just didn't really get that vibe from the end of the movie, especially when they played back in black. They were clearly trying to set him up to be the next Iron Man, which they undid in No Way Home. Thank God. But I really enjoy the change of pace this movie has. It's Spider-Man Summer Vacation. He wants a break for once and to really enjoy his time with his friends and family. In Homecoming, more than anything, he wanted to be a hero. He wanted to be an Avenger. In this movie, he wants the exact opposite. He wants some R&R. &R. But you're Spider-Man, pal. With all this great power comes all this great responsibility. A highlight for me definitely got to be Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio. I just love the way they adapted him into the MCU, even if he is really just an Iron Man villain. I like that he was kind of like a combination of a couple of different superheroes. Doctor Strange, a little bit of Thor, a little bit of Iron Man. And having it all really just be an illusion with drones was smart. And this scene here, you can't trick me anymore. In eighth place, I got The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And I already know the comments we're going to be getting. Some people are going to think this is the worst Spider-Man movie. Some people are going to be thinking it's the best. It's neither of those. For as much as I think The Amazing Spider-Man 2 has some of the best Spider-Man moments, it also has some of the worst. Some of the best moments though are like when Spider-Man saves that kid and then that comes around again at the end of the movie. I love that. One of the best on-screen romances we've ever seen, which makes this scene so damn heartbreaking. G Gwen? No, please. <laughs> Fuck, I feel like I'm there now. And the visuals in this movie are insane. The best costume we've ever gotten for a Spider-Man. And I absolutely absolutely love the relationship between Peter and Aunt May in these movies. Like she knows he's Spider-Man, she knows, but she's not gonna say anything because you're my boy. The villains are terrible. It's overstuffed. Harry wanting Spider-Man's blood to save himself. Like what the f stupidest plot line ever. Plus the entire subplot with the mystery of his parents is pointless and goes against everything Spider-Man stands for. Peter Parker is the only one that can be Spider-Man because his dad put his own bloodline into those spiders. That goes against everything Spider-Man stands for. Anyone can wear the mask? Not according to this movie, but I still love this movie. I don't care. In seventh place, I got Spider-Man three. And I know there's like a weird cult following for having this movie number one. Are you serious right now? The marketing campaign for this movie was insane when I was younger. I was so excited to watch this movie and then it came out i still liked it because i'm, I'm spider-man but upon rewatch there's so many changes you could have made to this movie to make it a perfect third movie like not shoehorning venom in there my spider senses are tingling avi arad i'll never forgive you for shoehorning him in there they should have just let sam raimi cook with his original idea focus on sandman being one of the main villains and closing the loop on harry but i did like how we got to see bully mcguire and like this intoxicating struggle within yourself to be the fucking bad guy for once and when harry and peter teamed up at the end for the first time man fuck the avengers that was my original team up which made his death all the <laughs> sweeter the sandman scenes are so great i love how they made him sympathetic as well i'm not a bad person i've just had bad luck and i just love that whole scene when he figures out how to use his powers and grabs the locket with his daughter's picture in it powerful there is some corny ass shit in this everything with bully mcguire is so goofy but i love it that man's in a meme hall of fame in sixth place i got the amazing spider-man and i remember like not really liking this movie the first time i watched it because it really just tried to retread the origin which i thought was kind of a mistake they probably should have just skipped that but watching it again i really like this movie like it, it fits again this movie has some of the best pure spider-man moments that are essentially spider-man saving that kid on the bridge in the burning car telling him to put on the mask it'll make him strong that's spider-man he's a beacon of hope and i really like the lizard but they could have made him even better his wife and his son i always really like that about the animated series and his story in the comics i think having his family would have added more weight to his character instead of just wanting to turn everybody into lizards even though that shit would be lit zerd i'm out i mean the chemistry between emma stone and andrew garfield has me blushing not to mention the swinging scenes in this movie Woo! In fifth place, I got Spider-Man Homecoming. This is just an elite Spider-Man movie, an elite friendly neighborhood Spider-Man movie set in the MCU. It portrayed a young Peter Parker Spider-Man perfectly, especially set in the MCU with him wanting to be a hero, wanting to be an Avenger, all these heroes that he grew up watching. It makes sense that he wants to help. I actually like the camaraderie between him and Tony Stark and him being that pseudo Uncle Ben. Like for the MCU, it, it works. I love the introduction of all of his classmates. Ned knowing his Spider-Man is great, even though they stole that from Genki. And Michael Keaton as the vulture in this movie. The twist of him being Liz's dad. And that entire scene in the car. I'll kill you and everyone you love. I'll kill you. Dead. That's called motherfucking ball. In fourth place, I got the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man. This is one of the patriarchs in modern superhero film. The quintessential origin story. This movie came out on my birthday when I was a kid, so I love it extra hard. Hey, yo! And while it's not perfect, definitely corny. I just love how much heart and care was put into this movie. The scene where he learns how to climb up the wall for the first time. The upside down kiss in the rain. Come on, that's iconic. His battles with the green- Hey, yo! His battles with the green goblin in their juxtaposition. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. You know? And Willem Dafoe is the green goblin is one of the most iconic supervillains in film history this should be how everyone's top three goes doesn't really matter what order you put them in but i think this is the definitive top three spider-man no way home for me comes in third this movie is inherently spider-man not just for the fact that we get all three spider-man on screen together even though that definitely plays a huge factor 
here. I was weeping tears of joy. I'm a grown ass man. Shit brought so many tears to my eyes. Seeing all of the original villains back on the screen was crazy. Everybody gets their time to shine. The apartment fight scene is insane. Man was taking punches from a pissed off Spider-Man and laughing in his face. Strong enough to have it all. Too weak to take it. Aunt May's death scene. And us realizing that she's actually the MCU's Uncle Ben. And this was his origin story the whole time. And leaving us with a perfect ending for Spider-Man moving forward. And he does the most Spider-Man thing ever. Great power. There must also come great responsibility. He chooses to stay away from MJ and Ned. That is Spider-Man. And this costume. Love it. In second place, I got Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And I know this is probably my most controversial take. A lot of people probably have this at one. And rightfully so. This is the perfect Spider-Man movie. This is damn near almost a perfect movie. This is like the quintessential Spider-Man movie. Anyone can wear the mask. I love the introduction of all the other Spider-People across the multiverse. Miles Morales. He's literally me. Not to mention the impact the animation itself had. I mean, it won an Oscar for a reason. And that damn leap of faith scene. Like, what's up, danger? Man, I got chills just thinking about it. But in first place for me, this movie just holds a special place in my heart. This is my favorite film of all time. Not the best, my personal favorite. Favorite, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. This movie was just everything. It was everything to me as a kid. It's the movie that introduced me into filmmaking in general. I used to watch the behind the scenes of this all the damn time. And it gave me that love for filmmaking as a whole. There was just so much passion and care put into this movie. It has everything you can want out of a film. Every type of emotion you can think of, this movie provides a cathartic experience for you to evoke that emotion. I cry like a little bitch in every scene with Aunt May. Yes, you can. You can take this money from me. For God's sakes, it's not much, so take it. I believe there's a hero in all of us. Like, just so good. Him losing his power. This movie is with great power that must also come great responsibility personified. This is the definitive Spider-Man movie. Not to mention it features some of the best action we've ever seen in a superhero movie ever. Like it's crazy how the train scene still holds up to this day. The use of CG and practical effects is insane in this movie throughout. We get horror elements with Doc Ock. J.K. Simmons is a legend as J. Jonah Jameson. Purr, hello, you're fired. Peter just keeps getting shit on in this movie with everybody. And it's all because he has to be Spider-Man. Harry hates him. MJ's gonna marry your boss's son of all people. Aunt May's getting evicted. Everyone fucking hates Spider-Man. And you're contributing to that because you're the photographer who lets it happen even though you're doing the right thing like i've just never related to a character so much and that's just without him wearing a costume so when we finally get that moment on the train scene beautiful and him using aunt may's words to snap doc ock out of it man it's just a perfect movie in my opinion but that's just how i would rank them let me know how you would rank all nine spider-man movies down in the comments below and as always like and follow for more